And Aleem van der Poel is a Chief Operating Officer at Debt Rescue South Africa, and she joins us now. Very good evening to you, Aleem. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Um, perhaps just to uh, reiterate the point that was made there. So for ordinary South Africans, when we look at uh, South Africa's national debt vis-a-vis -vis GDP, P, debt to GDP and uh, how that affects the money in our own pockets. How do we explain that? Good evening and thank you so much for having me. Um, I think it's important to understand that, you know, as, as the country generates um, income and obviously has to incur debt, it generates its income from largely from taxes so that would be from us as as um, you know consumers it would be from corporate it would be from VAT. there's various ways in which government generates its income so it's very important to understand that there's this debt and it needs to be paid and right now um it's it's sitting at an astronomical figure and the reality is um you know it's it's borrowed and it's at interest rates which means a large portion of what gets paid back every single month goes to interest first and then capital so i think you've explained it very clearly there to to you know as, put it as if if every single South African uh, owed or got a portion of that money, we'd each get 78,000 rand. It's an astronomical amount, and it really is um, wreaking havoc on our economy and growth and, and moving forward, especially in the, in the very difficult um, global time that we are facing right now. Mm. I mean, when we look at government expenditure and uh, that against uh, revenue that is also generated from uh, tax collections. I mean, this is how uh, the ordinary man on the street sees that. How do you gauge the value thereof and if government really is working for us? I mean, the first thing that we look at is a service delivery. But uh, South Africa appeals to uh, many other Western countries, and this is what uh, people compare us to in terms of health spending or even just uh, amenities that are available to the public, like reliable, accessible and um, available public transport, for instance. Well, I mean, we heard in, in the budget last week, um, you know, from the finance minister, where he was trying to explain to us what the, ex the expectations are in terms of um, where the money is going to come from and uh, how it needs to be spent. And we have to understand that um, it's a very, very difficult balancing act right now in terms of um, we have a large expenditure, as we know that government is taking on a portion of ESCOM's debt. Uh, it's very critical that that needs to be sorted. It's been a a very um, serious issue for quite a few years now. And this year, we, for example, we've seen the, the highest uh, amount of load shedding since uh, load shedding was implemented. And we know that government is sitting with this very, very difficult scenario where it has to, um, you know, for example, sort out the infrastructure. Um, it also has to obviously take care of, of um, you know, our South Africans who are severely struggling. I mean, as Mr. Ritt had, had put it um, earlier, um, people are living well below the breadline. Um, so we've got our, our grants that are going out there. And it, it's a very difficult balancing act right now that um, has to be applied to see where, which funds are able to be generated and how best to apply them for a combination of the growth of our economy. But more than that, taking care of South Africans and providing, as you mentioned, those, those amenities. And it, it's definitely not an easy, easy task at the moment. Mm. Just in terms of uh, what you and I, as in South African citizens, are, you know, contributing, um, firstly, to the economy by being active, if we are able to, but also through those taxes, because, I mean, if uh, we look at debt levels in South Africa at the moment, I think a lot of people will probably tell you that they can't even feel they don't even feel like they can afford um, paying their taxes so let's talk through the importance of that we just heard the reserve bank governor for instance saying that uh, monetary policy alone cannot solve uh, the country's problems in terms of economic growth so what is then the role of fiscal policy in conjoining all of these factors 
Well, a monetary policy right now, the biggest factor and, and the biggest impact that they have is obviously curbing inflation. And they do that through the interest rates, as we're aware. So, um, and then this year already, we've seen significant interest rate hikes. Um, we are well back to pre-COVID levels in terms of what we're being charged um, in interest for our, our consumer debt, uh, what we pay every single month on our installments. So, obviously, that is already an indication of, of um, you know, what the Reserve Bank can do. But as the, the, the Reserve Bank government also rightly said it has a limited impact it's it's broader than that so i think what's really important is is that um in terms of expenditure it's it's critical to see um what is necessary what is the right kind of debt for the country for example to incur um as we know infrastructural development is is, is a very important part of um, a country's economy and investing in that whether it is by loans is is a better option and we know that we have infrastructural opportunities for um, enhancement and improvement as we said um looking at escom is one of the first ones that, that really because not only is it a good investment but we know the impact it's having on business it's having on the economy um, we know small businesses medium businesses are struggling to keep their doors open uh, when they do not have electricity to for example manufacture so it's really really critical that in this time that we need to be able to spend but spend in the right way the same way that we as consumers also need to be very very cautious in terms of our consumer personal budgets same goes for government and, and, and that's what I wanted to get to next. So just in terms of the work that you've done as Debt Rescue South Africa, what are the numbers that you're seeing in terms of consumer debt? And um, also please explain um, the concept of debt rescue or um, debt consolidation. I mean, uh, some people will tell you that it's good to do that, but others say it can actually impact on your employability potentials? So I think it's very important that, um, you know, we keep talking about this, but it's really, really important that we go, we start at the very beginning. And that means literally going back to that budget. Um, if you have debt, if you're one of the um, 20 million South Africans who ha are credit active and have debt, um, to make sure that if you are potentially one of the almost 40% who are over indebted, that you are making lifestyle changes where you still can. Um, it, it's true. A lot of consumers have done this ages ago and really just can't anymore. We know living expenses have increased exponentially um, in the last two years. We know the impact of the Ukraine-Russia conflict, what that is doing to the cost of living. Um, there's a multitude of factors, interest rate hikes, uh, uh, the cost of fuel that's gone up uh, a lot is going up again tomorrow. So it's very, very important that we start by going back to the ground, uh, to, to the absolute basics, looking at our budgets, making changes where we possibly can. And then if you have made those changes and you cannot afford the minimum installments owing on your debt, that you look towards a legal solution which can help you protect your assets, give you that legal protection in the form of debt counseling. Now, debt counseling has been around since 2000, 2007, um, and it's, it's proven itself over and over that this is the best remedy for a consumer who is over indebted and has made all the changes and can no longer afford to pay, you know, put um, food on the table as well as pay his debt. And um, it's just a very successful story. Understanding what debt counseling is, debt counseling is not a quick fix. It's a solution which helps you to repay the debt that you have. And what that means is um, one of the biggest concerns consumers generally tend to have is I am not allowed to get credit whilst I, I'm under debt review. But understanding the reason for that is you won't need it because your budget has been set up. We tend to walk into the store and swipe our card to buy groceries, which is, of course, you know, now means we, we're paying interest on food. Um, is, is changing our habits and saying, I have my budget. I know what's allowed for my food. I know how much I have for fuel, transport, et cetera. And living within that budget, I do not need to incur further debt. And once you complete the process, you are debt free. You have paid up all your debt and all you right. are starting okay. afresh. I mean, and you can able be able. I, I'm so sorry to cut you off, but unfortunately we have run out of time, but much appreciated for that, your time and your Thank insights. You. Annaline van der Poel, Chief Operating Officer at Debt Rescue SA. Thank you so much for speaking to us.